It's something of a cliche that uh, Canada, as one of the most liberal immigration policies in the industrialized or the um, Western world, um, and I think there is some justification to it, but there's also um, the underlying um, murmuring that the immigration system that Canada uses is totally mercenary and self-interested in that um, it doesn't matter so much what color you are as to what skills you've got to offer the host country. If we need uh, people in job X, then we go looking for people in job X. If we need uh, people in a different type of occupation with a different type of skills, these people are brought into the country. Um, Canada and the United States, as I've mentioned before, have certain advantages in that um, Canadians are used to the fact that um, the demographics of the country will change from generation to generation. Europeans are, f are f for the first time, um, experiencing this sort of thing, and it's disorienting to some people. And I think that a lot of European countries are examining avenues to cope with um, this inevitable, if you ask me, uh, force of immigration. The forces are too large to do anything about to actually stop um, the demographic changes that are going to take place in the next hundred years. I don't think anything can stop them. Um, but people are looking around with, uh, for ways to manage them. And um, an interesting study by the Swedish, Swedish government has sort of held up um, Canada as a model. Or I don't know if it was the Swedish government, but uh, um, Swedish think tank. I'm not going to comment on whether or not uh, the Canadian model is suitable for any other country than Canada. And I'm certainly not going to say that, that the Canadian model is anything other than mercenary. It is. It's, it is mercenary. Um, but one little interesting um, sort of tail end of the article in the Canadian newspaper uh, that got me thinking in a, in a way that I would like to make a video about this um, is the last paragraph in an article in the Globe and Mail, one of Canada's uh, two national newspapers, about the Swedish uh, study of the Canadian uh, immigrant um, system, the, the system of uh, managing immigrants, immigration into Canada. Um, the last paragraph of this article, which I'll link below, says the following. In much of Europe, including Sweden, many full-time jobs are guaranteed for life, which creates a closed, privileged, white-skinned elite and an excluded, brown-skinned minority who are stuck in informal jobs and unemployment. Now, there's two ways one could look at that. One could say that that's kind of the problem with the European model. It could also be taken as an extremely smug thing for a Canadian to say. An extremely arrogant um, a condemnation of European society. I suppose I would just like to ask a few Europeans if there's any truth to that. I don't think that the European system is designed to produce this. People with secure jobs for life, with white skins and uh, local names, i.e. Swedish people with Swedish names and white skins uh, in, the, uh, in the labor aristocracy with jobs for life, and the same thing going for Germany with German people in the jobs for life aristocracy in Germany and so on in Italy and Spain and whatever. Is that the case? Does labor law in Germany or in Sweden or in the Netherlands create this kind of a two-tier labor system. I don't think that's what um, these sorts of labor laws and labor culture was meant to create. Just a thought, and um, be as free as you like with uh, your criticism of the Canadian immigration system or Canada in general. As I say, I think that this article kind of, even though it states to be modest, I think there's a subconscious or um, hidden arrogance at the very heart of it. Thank you.